What's going on guys? Kwasi here for Kwasi Animations and Kwasi Media. Sorry, you're gonna hear a lot of background noise right now. I got some people doing some stuff outside, um, handling some on the, on the roof, and as well, um, a couple of people uh, doing things around in the neighborhood. So there's gonna be some noise going on. Nonetheless, with that being said, right now I'm going to set up the shaders for Xenoverse 2 style shading. Um, is a request of a friend of mine, so I'm gonna break this down and we're gonna go from there. So one of the things that I recognize about this shader is the fact that it doesn't have, uh, like even though it has a location on it, 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 it just, it doesn't need it. <laughs> um, <laughs> it doesn't need it at all. So the Xenoverse shaders have a metallic shader on them. All right, so that's one of the main things that you wanna pay attention. It has a metallic shader on it. so basically what you want to do is go in and find the, the texture or rather the shading the color tone that you want so i'll find the one that i know i'm going to use that's roughly about it make it a little darker because you're gonna well i'm just going to do the shader based on how they have it set up and then i'm going to add a version of the tune shader to it okay so if you already looked at the tune shading tutorial still look at that because this is going to be attached but the difference is there won't be that outline there because we're using the outline from uh, Xenoverse itself. So again, this is you. This is setting your characters up to look like those from Xenoverse, not necessarily to just do a do an anime style shader. So first of all, one of the main things you want to do is go and get all of the e, uh, EB, EMB files that are attached to the character, and then go and get them turned and, and turn them into a PNG. Best way to do this is paint.net. The app or program called paint.net is the best one to use. And when you go into it, what you want to do is convert it from DDS to PNG. All right. Okay. So we're going to use this particular image and I'm going to put it here on the factor of the mix shader. And then I want to take the alpha from here and add it to the bottom of the BDS of the uh, principal shader. Okay. All right, you see how it looks? It looks all kooky and crazy, all right? Because it's showing the damage that will usually be attached to the character. All right, for one, that's the wrong, that's the wrong one, I'm sorry. I went to the wrong one. <laughs> Pardon me, I'm sorry. It, that was the correct clicking. I just clicked the wrong thing. There we go. All right, now it's set up properly right okay now you might say well, why is it dark like that well that's mainly because i have the color jacked in when i should have the alpha jacked in to here okay so now it's shaded properly so you want the alpha I'm, i apologize for that the alpha to go into the factor of the mix shader and then i have this I don't even know why I kept it. All right, so now since we have a normal attached to it, I'm gonna click the eyedropper and click the skin color. And then I'm going to reduce the way that the shader sees, the way it's, it's seen in the shape, okay? So I wanna take this and find the right balance. All right, there we go. It's not too bad. And because of the normals of the way they are, you see how you can see this division here? I, I, I'm sorry, but in all truth, I try to figure out how to fix that. I don't know what to do there. So I'm just gonna be honest about that. Now, because I want it to still have the anime style shading, I'm going to create an anime shader real fast. So bear with me. And I'm probably, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do that real fast. Oh, forgot, we're not gonna use this top one. So let me get rid of that. All right. Because usually when I use my anime shader, I have a layer node on top of it to give an outline. But we're not doing it this time because again, the, the character has these animated lines that are attached that come with the shader. That's why I kept the metallic shader attached. All right. And this still needs a mix shader to go with that. So color into factor, color into factor, color <laughs> into shader. All right. Excuse me. Then I'm going to pick the color from here. I want that top portion to be lighter, I mean darker, and the bottom one to be lighter. Click all of it, Control G. 
shader into group output and shader into group input. Click it here and then we're gonna name it TN shader. All right, then I'll move it over. And basically what I wanna do is drop it here. And again, I have to go in and fix the brightness and darkness levels. Because again, we're, we're set out to make a shader that's similar to the game. And there we go. All right. To understand in the game, the shader is always pretty much the same on both sides. So no matter which way you aim it, it's going to always pretty much have that same darkness in that same spot. Usually. Just the way the game's set up. Now, I could come in here and probably... So yeah, that's the shader. That's the actual shader. So you will do this for every portion of the character. All right. So later, if I go to his bust, it's the same deal. Nothing changes. And the only thing here is, is I want the same color. Okay. Cause I don't want to have to sit here fighting with the color. So what I figured to do was come back here, click this and copy it and then go back to the bust, delete this one and paste it because I want that exact same color. All right. And that was the best way I figured out to do it because I didn't want to have to keep trying to color, find the color, color, um, <laughs> find the correct shading or correct color to match. It was just annoying because I find myself repeating, repeatedly doing that. And I, and I was like, I shouldn't have to keep doing this. And that's the, that's just the way that it turned out. So for the rest of these things, we're going to delete these because I'm not going to use those. I, I know I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the normal map. So again, the normal map will have the shading, this this shading up here. So I'll open up the principal shader so I can see it on the side here. It makes it easier to eye drop it. So click here, do this, eye drop it, and then drop it on the normal. And for the sake of knowing that number, I'm gonna go here, copy that number, come back here and paste it. So now it has the exact same number. And then I come over here because I already was in his stuff. I go to TN images. We're talking about the bust. Click the bust PNG. Alpha into the factor. And then again, now we're going, now I'm going to the TN, the shader, because it's the exact same shader. So I don't have to do anything besides click it. And now we are set. Okay, so this is pretty much the shader. Now, if you are, again, because it's in this particular mode, it doesn't look as bright you, as you would think. So I'll change the mode and then beef this up. Because I understand that Xenoverse is really bright. So it would be like really bright here. So this is pretty much the, the shading you want. Now, again, if you want it closer, then look at reference pictures to see the color of the character and get as close as you possibly can. But that's pretty much it right there. So this is the shader that is in Xenoverse, period, dot period. If you're trying to get it to look any other particular type of way, then just play around with your nodes. Because again, the roughness is all the way up. If I bring it down, it's metallic, right? So. When I bring it all the way up, then it's 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 like this because so, the specular really doesn't work really well unless you have a lot of roughness. So I mean, uh, no roughness versus a lot of roughness. So once the roughness is at max, it doesn't really work as well. Uh, the specular doesn't. So this is pretty much it. And again, real quick, I'm going to show you how to do in Paint.net, and you can do it in other programs, but Paint.net just does it better to get these lines without all of the damage attached. All right, so let's go do that real fast. So here we go. All right, so, ooh, I just thought about that. Oh, look, hold on, wait a minute, let me go to the, all right. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is go to Paint.net, I'm going to open it. All right, it's open. And then I'm going to go into, let's say, the folder for those characters, right? So I'll go into, I'll say Videl. So I don't have her images, so I'll go into Krillin, I have his images. All right, so all his images have been done. All right, so, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop, let's say, his bust in here. All right, open the image. Okay. Oh, oh, never mind. I'm sorry, my bad. Go to the bust, because it needs to be the DDS file. I'm sorry. The DDS file, open that image. And the image is already in there. Now understand I had already saved it, so it's already clean and clear. But when you hit save, it allows you to save it as a BC1 linear DTX1. Okay. I mean uh DXT1 file. Alright. When you save it, it's going to get rid of all the damage there. And then when you go back, you'll go back and do save as and then save it as a PNG. Okay, so now your PNG files will be in there. And that's basically how you do that. So once you load up that that file and it has that 
preset, the preset with all the damage attached, then you can put it in the paint.net. And paint.net is free. It's literally the name of the program, paint.net. All right, so when you hit save, it's gonna allow you to save the DDS file as this as a BC1 file. So it'll still be a DDS, but it'll clear out all of that damage and just leave the lines. And that's what I like about it. So that's what I end up doing for that model. So hopefully to help someone out, if you need to ask any questions, uh, leave a comment and I will get back with you as soon as possible. And if not, see you in the next one. Number love.